If you're planning to go on a vacation soon, please read this story. We made a mistake of trying to be adventurous, and it cost more than we ever thought it would. My name is Liam. I'm 18 years old. I worked part-time jobs ever since I got into high school to be able to afford a vacation before going to college. The reason I wanted to do this was because once I left for college, I'd either be stuck in my room studying or going to low-budget college parties, neither of which sounded great. Three of my best friends from high school also had the same idea. A small Asian guy named Seth, his parents immigrated to America from Japan. One of the friends I'd never thought I would have, Sarah, she was a Caucasian daddy's girl. She was spoiled and always got what she wanted. And a tall black guy named JJ, who was chill and loved to crack jokes to make people laugh. The four of us decided we wanted to go on vacation together. It would cost us less and we could spend more time with each other before we went our separate ways. We were thinking of where to go when Seth suggested we should go to Japan. You're always talking about how you would love to see Japan, so why not go there? I'm sure my parents would love it too if I visited Japan, he said, smile on his face. He always wanted to impress his parents, but he was right. We did want to visit Japan, and he would help us navigate because he could still speak Japanese. We all agreed, and after we graduated, we booked tickets for a flight to Japan on Friday morning. We spent the next couple of days packing up our stuff, and JJ said he had some camping equipment we could take there in case we decided to go camping. When Friday morning came, we were all waiting in the airport, excited to go on vacation and explore. After a while, we got on the plane and the flight went smoothly. I was asleep for most of it. We landed in Chua and went to the hotel so that we could get ourselves rooms. We spent the rest of the day exploring the city and trying different street foods and before we knew it, it was time for us to get back to our hotel rooms and call it a night. Next day, we woke up feeling refreshed and ready to go out for our next day of exploration. We were at one of the street food vendors that sold Dango when we decided to ask if there were any interesting locations for camping. He said that there was a forest known for people committing suicide in it. The name was Okigahara, but he told us we weren't allowed to camp in there, only visit for tours. Being dumb and adventurous teenagers that we were, we decided to go there camping. Not our first time breaking the rules, and we would find a nice secluded spot in there that no one would bother us or even know where we were. Seth was against the idea at first, saying how we should respect the dead and not do what we were not supposed to do but he quickly agreed after he saw that we were not letting that opportunity go. We rented a car, bought some booze, fire starting kit, and a survival knife in case anything attacked us. As the evening came, we started making our way to the forest. The drive took about 40 minutes, so it wasn't too bad. We had a lot to talk about. We got there as it started to get dark and we quickly made a fire and set up our tents in which we were going to sleep. Next couple hours we spent talking and drinking and generally having fun. We shared scary stories we came upon in our life, and soon the time came for us to go to bed. We put out the fire, and I got into my sleeping bag and dozed off. I woke up in the middle of the night. As I rubbed my eyes, I decided to see what time it was. The clock read 2.48 a.m., and I realized I needed to pee really badly. As I left my tent and made my way a bit deeper into the woods, I thought I saw a figure of a person. But as I blinked again, it was gone. I shrugged it off as me being hungover and just seeing things. I finished my business and made my way back to my tent. I fell asleep and once again I was awoken, but this time I could hear something. It sounded like a muffled voice speaking in Japanese. Thinking it was Seth speaking with a park ranger or something, I got out of my tent and I could see Seth at the edge of the forest. Based on his posture, I figured he wasn't peeing, so I thought he may have been sleepwalking. As I approached him, the voice became more loud and clear, indicating that it was indeed Seth speaking. Hey man, what are you up to? I asked, expecting him to either not answer because he was sleepwalking or be embarrassed that I caught him talking to himself in the middle of the night. Seth did stop speaking, but he didn't turn in my direction. He was looking out into the woods, not saying anything. As I moved a few steps forward, he turned towards me in a speed I never thought was possible. He jerked his hand a bit, which was placed on the left side of his abdomen as he let out a groan. Are you okay? I said, moving towards him. That's when I noticed what he was actually doing. He plunged our survival knife deep into his abdomen. 
He looked at me with a satisfying expression as he slid the knife horizontally across his abdomen. I was frozen in fear, standing still as my friend bled out in front of me. After I gained some control of my body, I screamed. My lungs burned as I screamed again and again. JJ and Sarah woke up to see what was happening and once they saw Seth, they too screamed at the top of their lungs. We need to get the fuck out of here. I said as I ran back to the camp to pack our stuff up. Not even 10 seconds into the packing, I could hear JJ scream. No, Sarah, where the fuck are you going? He yelled, and as I turned my head, I could see Sarah running into the woods. Fuck, we need to go after her. We can't leave her in the forest alone. I exclaimed, nodding my head to the direction in which she ran. JJ just nodded his head and we ran after her, adrenaline pumping in our veins. We ran like that for five minutes until we saw Sarah climbing a tree, already almost at the top. Sarah, get down. Please, you don't want to do this, I said with worry and panic enveloping me. As she climbed the tree, she looked at me and JJ once again with a smile and look of satisfaction on her face as she let herself fall down on top of her head, the sound of bone snapping as her body fell limp and lifeless. We didn't say anything. We simply looked at the ground for five... 10 minutes, I'm not even sure how long. We just sat there, our gaze meeting the ground beneath us. As we were looking down, JJ pulled out a knife which was already covered with Seth's blood. I didn't even try and stop him. No, I was waiting for him to do it so I can have my turn. Just as he was about to pierce his abdomen, a figure emerged from the bushes next to us and shoved JJ who then dropped the knife. The man said something in Japanese as he picked JJ up and made a gesture for us to follow him. And we did. We followed him back to what we assumed was his house. He made us some tea and he started to speak. How many? How many have passed? The man said bluntly. Me and JJ looked at each other as we said, Two. In unison. This force makes people want to end their lives. It's not known for suicides for no reason. Every time someone spends more than six hours in the forest, the forest makes them commit suicide. He paused, meeting our glance to make sure we were still listening. The reason it does this is because there was a tribe living there hundreds of years ago. After they were defeated and about to be wiped out, their shaman put a curse on the forest, making anyone who stayed there for prolonged periods of time end their own life. He said, as JJ and I finished our tea, I suggest you leave now. Leave to wherever you came from and don't come back. He said as he got us back to town. It was already dawn at this point. When we got back, me and JJ packed our stuff, got a refund for the hotel for the next two nights, and got a flight back home. We didn't dare say a word to the police. We didn't want to stay in that cursed place any longer. Two weeks have passed since that incident, and I just got the news that JJ committed suicide. As I'm sitting here, about to post this, with the gun in my right hand, it doesn't seem like such a bad idea. Thank you for listening to We Went On A Vacation To Japan. I wish we never did. A creepypasta written and credited to a Reddit user on the No Sleep forums. Narrated by me, Creepy Sauce. I would like to iterate, I, Creepy Sauce, in no way condone the acts of suicide. If you feel you need help, reach out to me or 1-800-273-8255. I promise there's more to life. From now on, any and all footage shot in my videos will be shot by me. I hope you enjoy them as much as I love finding these spots to shoot. If you like creepypastas and want to suggest more, leave them in the comments and I'll read them and possibly narrate and upload them. This is my seventh upload of many, so if you enjoyed the short story of Creepypasta World, be sure to subscribe and turn the bell on, because I will be uploading consistently and looking for all kinds of creepy stories to tell. I need your help with more stories and ideas to do. I need your opinions on what I can do to improve. But hey, this is Creepy Sauce, and I'm on to the next pasta.